Hey everybody, how's it going? It's a Daily Shooter, and today I want to answer one of the most frequently asked questions that I get here on this channel, and that has to do with featureless rifles. What can you have up front? Angled foregrips, vertical foregrips, hand stops, what keeps it featureless and what doesn't? Let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, before we get started, I should mention that I am not an attorney, so this should not be considered legal advice. If you need actual legal advice, please contact a competent Second Amendment attorney here in the state of California that can answer your questions. To be honest with you, even law enforcement has a hard time making heads and tails of half of this crap that comes out of our state government. So just keep that in mind. I'm trying to convey information that I have learned over the past couple years uh, about these topics to you so that you can make better informed decisions. Uh, sometimes I get things wrong, so always make sure that you do your own research. Okay, so this is considered a featureless rifle here in the state of California. And when you talk about featureless in this state, there's kind of a then and a now. And what I mean by that is if you owned a bullet button rifle prior to 2016 and you wanted to avoid registration, which uh, is part of the new law, you would have had to convert your standard bullet button rifle to either featureless, mag locked, or maybe bolt action or rim fire. If you made those conversions, you could avoid registration. And that was kind of the goal for a lot of people who didn't want to register their rifles. So they went ahead and they made those conversions. But after the new law took effect, well, once you went to the store, there wasn't anything else. Everything up on the shelf has something like this installed because you had to be a special dealer in order to sell anything that was considered a standard by the rest of the country. So now if you walk into Turner's, you walk into Big Five, you walk into any other big box store and you're looking for something like this, now after the law took place, it's just gonna have that pre-installed. So when people are buying these and they're buying them with these things pre-installed from the dealer, uh, they're wondering what they can do with it. You know, what can I put up front? What can I add to it? What can I change? What can I modify without uh, changing its overall featureless, you know, style? People want to be able to go and shoot at public ranges without getting in trouble or thrown in jail. So that is a pretty common question. I mean, everybody that's bought a rifle since 2016 or 2017 is going to have something like this on there. And so, you know, that question comes down for me a lot. So when it comes to featureless rifles, uh, basically when it comes to featureless rifles, you can't have any vertical grips, okay? No vertical grips, but not everything that is attachable in the front is considered a vertical grip. So you can have some things. For instance, I have an example here. This is a Magpul vertical grip. If I was to install this vertical grip on this featureless rifle, it would no longer be considered a featureless grip, or excuse me, a featureless rifle because it has a vertical grip. However, there are other products that are on the market that you can still use. For instance, this is a Night Strike grip right here, and this is considered an angled foregrip. It is not considered a vertical foregrip. So if I take this Night Strike grip and I went ahead and I add it to my rifle like this, a featureless rifle, it's still considered featureless because it does not have a vertical grip. This is an angled grip. At most, it's a hand stop, but a lot of it has to do with what the manufacturer calls it. So keep that in mind. Even if there's a little stubby thing, the manufacturer calls it a vertical grip that could get you to trouble, you know, into trouble in court. So keep that in mind. One of the things I'm going to be installing today is this little hand stop right here. This is from phase five weapon systems. This is a hand stop and it says right on the package that this is a hand stop. It is not considered a vertical grip. And you know what? No matter what you do, you could not vertically grip this anyway. Nonetheless, it is a hand stop. So things to keep in mind, no vertical grips on the front end, but hand stops and angled foregrips are definitely still a go. Okay, so I went ahead and I installed the Phase 5 Weapon Systems Micro Stop right here. This is a really nice piece. It's This one's anodized in red. They have several different colors. But again, this is a hand stop, not a vertical grip. So it's completely legal for me to install. It's completely legal for me to have on my featureless rifle. And it just doesn't change the fact that this rifle is still considered featureless. So even with that Phase 5 Weapon Systems Micro Stop, we're still good to go. Now, I do want to give you guys an example of what might not be okay. And a lot of this has to do with the definition from the manufacturer but uh, we have a tyrant designs this is a um, this is considered a vertical foregrip so I know this might be a little bit hard to see but this is considered a vertical foregrip because it is called a uh, mini vert grip 
by the manufacturer. So Tyrant Designs calls this a mini vert grip, AKA mini vertical grip. And so this would uh, basically change your featureless rifle into something that would not be considered featureless anymore. I have this on my 22. This is basically a standard AR that I've converted into 22. And so I can have whatever I want on here, including, you know, grips and adjustable stocks and everything else. But uh, I have a 22 conversion kit in there right now. So anyway, mini vert grip, even though it looks like it could be considered a hand stop and it's very small and it's really hard to get you know anything around it other than maybe a finger and a half or two fingers still because the manufacturer changed the name of it or not changed the name but because the manufacturer named it a vert grip uh, that could be something that could be considered illegal now if you like your vertical grips and you want something that's completely vertical and you always could go with something that is mag locked if you go with something that's mag locked like this rifle right here then you can have whatever you want on it pistol grips adjustable stocks and everything else but this is definitely not my favorite way to go because to be honest with you i feel that this way could definitely be dangerous because with a mag lock rifle obviously the magazine is stuck in there it doesn't allow you to get the magazine out if you have a malfunction with a live round in the chamber or something like that and you can't get the magazine out and the buffer buffer is stuck uh, halfway in the tube you can't break the upper and lower apart and so you kind of end up with a mess. And if you ask me, that's just definitely not the way to go. Uh, for me, it's going to be featureless. If I'm going to be going out in public or anything like that, I'm going to have a featureless rifle because I still have a standard magazine release. Uh, there are some great grips out there like this strike industry grip right here that uh, will allow you to have a little bit of a thumb rest and a thumb shelf. I have all ambidextrous controls, including an ambidextrous safety, which I believe is important since you can't get your thumb around to the other side. You want to still be able to activate a safety right here. Again, this is phase five, phase five. And then I also have a, uh, a phase five lever that allows me to, you know, drop that bolt if I need to. So all of my controls are going to be right handed on this one. For you lefties, I always suggest something from like Resurgent Arms. Uh, Resurgent Arms makes a great featureless grip that is good for uh, people who are left and right handed or people that just want to be able to switch uh, sides a little bit faster. But I hope that answers your question. I know I kind of rambled on a little bit. This is a topic that can get very deep and intense. Uh, we all hate this stuff. I hate this stuff. You know, I know groups like the Firearms Policy Coalition, Firearms Poly Policy Foundation, uh, Cowguns Foundation, and others are actively fighting to overturn this stuff. And so we need to make sure that we support them in the best way that we can. Uh, if they need money to help fund their, their fight and their attack, if we're not able to do anything, then maybe our money can help them do something. So anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I hope this again answered your question. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.